and we'll share <clears throat> we'll share the the link with everybody on Facebook or Instagram or however and yeah it'll be recorded um so do you want to start John well I can start I mean <clears throat> um but are we going to wait are we just waiting for the rest of the people are we waiting or are we starting now no, I mean, we're waiting for like, like a, one more minute. While we do that, we can just kind of like go through what we're going to talk about tonight and then, and then let Linda take over. Or should we just start? Yeah, yeah, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this evening for a conversation with the photographers from our exhibition, This Is It, A Human-Centered View of Us. Um, the ex exhibition is at South Shore Arts in Munster, Indiana, and it runs through January 8th. So if you are local, you should, we hope that you can uh, come and see it. Um, with us this evening are some luminaries of the uh, photography and photojournalism world. We have Mariah Carson, John Lowenstein, Stephen Mark, Carlos Javier Ortiz, and John H. White. Um, to start off the evening, um, each of our photographers is gonna do a little presentation uh, uh, with some slides and tell you a little bit about their practice. So um, we're gonna start off with uh, John Lowenstein. Okay, great. Okay, can everybody see it? Yeah. Great. So this is a project that I've been working on in Chicago in my neighborhood uh, that I lived in and have lived off and on in Chicago in the south side of Chicago and South Shore for a pretty long time. Um, the project takes on uh, really the issues of history, migration, um, social inequality, resilience, and tries to look at what's happening right in the neighborhood and also from a point of view of what is home. And so as I, I first started moving to Chicago in 93, moved to the South Side in around nine, 2005, but I had been teaching in the schools for quite a long time, for about four or five years, teaching photography. And so this project kind of was the second phase of that. And it really was about looking at what's happening just outside your door. What's it like when you step outside? And um, with Chicago being so segregated, I really tried to look at kind of the impact of history. So in the photograph of Matthias right here, Matthias Purnell, he was one of my students. And here he is like flexing in front of a factory that was basically um, closed down. And so it's kind of like, how do you stay resilient and um, survive in a place where the economy has kind of just been basically disappeared in the post-industrial collapse? And so I write um, to the photographs. Some of them I wrote, write uh, actual captions and others are just um, basically, uh, they're just basically ca uh, like personal writings about experiences I've seen. And so this one is really about kind of the white tees. But my work really tries to take on the scope of the past and the present coming together um, so on the left, you have photographs of the Bud Billiken Parade where I'm using Polaroid film. And um, then on the right is a, um, it's basically a piece of ephemera from a young woman named India Martin who was killed. And so it's RIP India, we're gonna, and um, these are some of my students and then memories of the student. Like I, I found this digital ephemera of one of my, former students, Les, Lester Owens. And then it made me start thinking about like when he was in the photo club, but then started thinking about this one day where I saw him on the street at Bud Billiken and he was in a very different place. So I kind of work 
my artistic practice really takes um, a very experimental and traditional route. I use everything from Polaroid to wet plate to iPhones. And this on the left is a rubbing. It's basically a grave rubbing in the Jewish cemetery, Jewish abandoned Jewish cemetery. <coughs> um, that's part of Oakwood Cemetery. Um, I write poetry. And ultimately the work takes on a sense of timelessness and a very specific look at the direct inequalities that happen in the United States and in Chicago. Um, as we know, the South Side was a destination, one of the major destinations for the great migration for work and also for African-Americans to escape Jim Crow. So this was really kind of a combination of that. Where are we today? And then what's the next phase? Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, our next uh, photographer is Mariah Carson. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta unshare my screen, sorry. Uh, if if any participant can please turn off their, their microphones if you're not a speaker if you can just go to mute that would be really helpful thank you hi everyone i'm mariah carson um i'm a chicago-based portrait and documentary photographer and my work in the This Is Us show is about veterans across the United States. Um, so <clears throat> it's part of two series, one about the American Legion and a little bit about the Montford Point Marine Association, uh, chapter two, which is located here in Chicago at 71st and Vincennes. Um, so the American Legion project I went to four different American Legion posts across the United States, all in communities of less than a thousand, um, and documented people that served our country and are now serving their community as members of the American Legion. Um, so it was a very eye opening experience. Uh, the project culminated in a hardcover book and the gallery exhibition that is part of the, the group show. Um, I originally, when I started it, was intended it only to be a photography project, but then after starting to speak with people, I realized that it had to be, um, I had to really like add a written element to the project and that's how it kind of became this book. Um, so it took me three years to make and then another year of design and production for the book. Um, and I worked with over a hundred veterans um, in all these different communities and they were all very different uh, places. Some had bars in the American Legion Hall, some had restaurants, some had were closed to the public, some were open. And the veterans all allowed me different levels of access to them. Uh, some of them allowed me into their homes or to show me something that they felt was really special. Um, I let them either talk about their service or not talk about their service. It was really up to them uh, what they wanted to talk with me about. And it was really an adventure to go and meet with people and see the way that they lived and see how their service affected them personally and how that carried over into how they interacted with people in their community and what role the physical structure of the American Legion Post plays uh, in as a focal point of the community and how they interact with school groups, children, um, and then other members. So everyone was really open and warm um, and it was a wonderful thing. It 
did lead me to do this other exploration about the Montford Point Marine Association, um, which has been having an ongoing trouble keeping their building open. Uh, they currently are closed right now. And um, Sharon Stokes Perry, the current president of their chapter, thinks that the building is cursed. Um, but the Montford Point Marines, if you're not familiar with them, they were similar to the Tuskegee Airmen, but for the Marines. So they were the first group of segregated Marines um, allowed during World War II. And they were, they trained uh, at a section of Camp Lejeune called Montford Point, but it was a much less hospitable area as opposed to where the, um, the white Marines were able to train. Um, so these are some images of that. And then with this project, um, I've done speaking engagements and things like that um, in conjunction with it. And I really like it when the veterans that are featured in the book have come to the different uh, events. And at the opening reception that we had last month, um, Sharon Stokes Perry came along with her husband and um, got to like kind of meet people and allow people that are seeing the exhibit to actually talk with the people in, in the photo, not just reading about it from my writing or um, from uh, me saying it, but they get to actually talk with the people themselves. So um, thank you, Linda. Thank you. Um, we'll go to Steve and Mark. Steven? Yep, coming up. Okay. Try and hit it, okay. Okay. Name is Stephen Mark. I'm teaching at Arizona State University, but for years I was at Columbia College in downtown Chicago. And the work from the exhibition is actually um, straddling a couple, two different projects. And I think one thing that's interesting in terms of hearing people talk about the work in a, you know, in a venue like this, and that is that when you see the work when it's already together, it looks like it's completely thought out, all put together. When you hear us kind of talking about the work, you get a better idea about how some of the different projects really kind of come together, um, where they're not completely formed, but as we start to kind of think through them. So at any rate, I did a book called American True Colors in uh, the late 2020, and I was photographing who we are as Americans all around the country, but it was a group of 250 state photographs um, from all around the country, and the reason for 250 is because this country will be 250 years old in 2026. So the reason I kind of stopped on this one, this is actually this past um, January, and this is actually in D.C., and this is the um, firefighters, the anti-vax firefighters in D.C., so after finishing American True Colors, I started looking at the images. And, I'm, and the next project I'm working on has a little bit of a different title, and it's called Street Cat Tales and Tangled Times. And it's going to be a combination of straight photographs and composites. And so what I found is that by using the individual photographs, they're interesting in terms of how they documented the place, but by using the composites, it was a matter of being able to extend sort of the narrative of what's going on. So this is probably about four or five photographs, but it's one of the um, protests in downtown Phoenix. Um, and by the way, I should back up because this is one image that I've been, um, people have questioned whether or not it was a multiple image or not. This is actually a straight photograph, but this is the protest of ban our, you know, bans off our bodies in Phoenix after the um, Roe versus Wade decision was overturned. So what you're going to see is, Steve, this is um, San Francisco. Yes. The image didn't change. It's not changing? No. Hmm. It's still on the, uh, on the um, vaccine. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop share and start back again because um, I was clicking here. Let's see how this works. Is it changing now? It's not up yet. Hmm, because I am sharing. Oh, now, it, now it's did, yes. Okay. Bands off our bodies. Yes, all right. Protests in Phoenix, and this is probably about, like I said, about three or four photographs. San Francisco during a climate uh, climate rally. This is the Stop the Steal rally actually in Phoenix, um, just um, a few weeks before um, the January 6th insurrection in DC. 
And this is actually um, Columbia, South Carolina. This is a week after the Confederate battle flag came down. And this is actually the Klan um, in their rally. They weren't allowed to wear their hoods and robes due to um, the moratorium in terms of what happened in Charleston. They also couldn't carry weapons. So they're actually escorted by state troopers from the parking place about four blocks away. So it's a longer story in terms of how some of these have taken, you know, how many of these situations I've been able to photograph have actually happened. But one thing is that there are a lot of people that um, think differently, act differently, and look differently than I do that I've been allowed to photograph. And I feel very fortunate being able to do that. Major reason for that is that, first of all, um, I'm there for experiences, number one, images, number two. But it also allows me to interact with people and get a much better understanding in terms of why they're there, how they, you know, how they think as I'm making images. So if I was standing across the street with a telephoto lens, I'd have preconceived ideas about what I was photographing. I'd make the images and illustrate those ideas, but I wouldn't know what was going on there. This is one of the no-shoot zones in Baltimore. This is the Middle Passage through the Ancestors in Coney Island. And this is um, a group of folks who actually, you're seeing the, the um, petitions being dropped off, where during the, um, during the protest after George Floyd was killed, um, several of the people, many people in uh, Phoenix were arrested and there were trumped up gang charges pressed against them. So this is actually the petitions being delivered to actually drop the charges. And that finally did happen. And then the last one of the group here is actually um, Reverend uh, Barber, Jesse Jackson, and one of the local pastors, Pastor Stewart, um, marching actually to Christian Cinema's office on Moral Monday. And um, so what you can see is um, as I'm working through the images, it's not only just the straight photographs, but the composites that start to weave together and tell a little bit more of the story. Most of the time they're from a particular event. Other times they're actually several, you know, different events that are actually kind of merged together. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how the next book kind of works out in terms of as it actually alternates between the straight and uh, composited images. Thanks, Steve. I can leave it there. Thank you. Um, and our our last uh, slideshow for the evening is Carlos. Oh. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Really, uh, it's important for us to have you um, sharing the screen with us. So I appreciate your time and attention. Um, so I, I want to really the the project that's up. Um, in the exhibition, it's called We All We Got. I spent about a decade, uh, a little more, I spent about two decades thinking about it and, and I spent a, a decade working on it. Um, and it really started with simple photographs of the, the, the effects of gun violence on, on families, um, young people in Chicago and Philadelphia. And again, I, I use my, my you know, my, my background in, in experimental, uh, you know, film and working with photography. Um, I started shooting Polaroids. Uh, John Lowenstein and I have known each other. We've been friends for uh, a little over 20 years. So we, we would share our mediums with each other and, and talk about um, photographing, right? And a lot of times we were together in some of these uh, uh, places. And I really started reaching out to families, talking to them, uh, getting invited to really personal, um, personal moments, uh, grieving, um, parties, life, um, and then also like the daily, you know, the daily routine on the block, right? Like after a shooting, these kids were not involved in any of these shootings, right? But they lived on this block and they were affected by how the block is uh, cornered by police tape and the police and, and the media and all that, right? Um, and then my, my, that, that was the first reaction to my work, right? And the second reaction to my work was really the reaction of family, the, the part that I really knew, right? Uh, I don't really know the violence, but you know the, you, you know the violence because you hear it. It affects you. Some of your friends uh, are affected by it. But what I really wanted to actually show was um, show and tell. And I was like, it was, it was just what was happening on the streets, how families came together to celebrate, to live, to mourn, to move forward. Um, this is a block where families on this block, middle, you know, middle low income families. Put their money together to throw a block party 
um, in Elbram Gresham, you know, in a very poor neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. And, you know, the, the thought is for many people is that, you know, people in the neighborhood don't care, but people in the neighborhood do care. They keep their neighborhoods clean. They try to keep, you know, pretty lawns in front of their places. And the, the, the black middle class is very affluent in black, in, in black neighborhoods. And I also spent time in brown neighborhoods. So I, you know, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm mixed. So I, I, I would go from these two cultures that were part of me, black and brown culture. Um, and then going to, going to spaces like the, the beach um, and, and making portraits, I, I sat, I would go to the beach a lot to make portraits and share these portraits, these Polaroids with family members. Um, and, and, you know, like I would show these at schools and I showed it at the school on the West side and these kids were like, that's my cousin. And, and the other girls were like, this, this kid here, the other girls in the, in the room were like, your cousin is fine, you know? And it created a conversation just from this Polaroid, you know, from this image. Um, the, the book published in 2014 with uh, a collaboration, uh, Red Hook Editions, um, published it. Jason Eskenazi really helped me um, think about how to put this book together. And I, 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 I'll always be, uh, um, you know, in, not in debt, because I don't like to be in debt, but I always appreciate his help and, and love and support. Um, and, and so when I, when I was putting the book together, I was putting a bunch of things together, right? I was putting composites of, of work that I did, flyers that I got from parents. Um, the book, you know, then, then obviously it, it, it was uh, published and sold online. But I also had this, <clears throat> during the project, I had these, um, these, these like, classes I would do with uh, young people, I, I received an audience engagement grant from the Open Society Institute, um, OSI at the time. And, and, you know, this is what kids wrote. Like, so I made my work very vulnerable. I made prints and put them on the table, which is like something photographers <clears throat> don't really do. But I wanted to, to make sure that I would be open to getting some feedback from my community, <clears throat> excuse me. And so here are the books that were written by the students. I still have them. And here, are, here's some ephemera I got from parents, shirts, uh, sticky notes, my, my, um, you know, my, my, my logs that I kept, things that I found in the streets, just kind of to, to document a time. This is a, uh, from 2008 to 2014. And to, you know, to be able to have some evidence in the future to show what this time looked like. Um, the, the work was shown in the Bronx Documentary Center. Um, it's been shown in a lot of places. Um, it was showed here in Chicago. Um, it, it's in, uh, right now is in the permanent co collection of MOCP, Museum of Contemporary Photography. And this is, uh, this is the show at the Museum of Contemporary uh, Photography. This is shown with uh, another photographer, his name is David Chalio. And then the show was in reaction to Dawu Bey's um, images from Birmingham. So it was a really beautiful collaborative show. <clears throat> there was a lot of people that came through it. Um, and, it, and we had three floors. Um, it, it, it was right before the pandemic, 2019. It's a film I made uh, called A Thousand Midnights, uh, which I wanted to show today, but it's about six minutes long. But you can, you can view all this work in my films on my website. If you're interested in getting a book, is there. Um, Kristen Taylor is the, was a curator um, and we still work together. Um, I'm on the board of MOCP. So we're doing engagement with, uh, with 
with high schools um, in, in Chicago. And that David Shalia was the other photographer in the show. He's a professor, sociologist. And yeah, so this is, I, I just show, I always kind of show like how the work ended up being published um, in different newspapers and magazines afterwards. Sometimes your work doesn't get published, <clears throat> excuse me, right when you do it. So you have to be patient. And the films, <clears throat> excuse me, and the films made it to uh, uh, AFI, American Film Institute, and Tribeca and other, uh, other film festivals. So my films had a, a lot of uh, play and it was really helpful to, to not just show the photography part of it, but also the, the, the films, you know, that really kind of captured another time, another moment uh, right before the explosion of, of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and um, what we saw right in the middle of pandemic. And then I got to, that work led to the case for reparations with uh, the writer ta Coates. And so from doing this work and working at the Chicago Defender, <clears throat> I had the, uh, you know, the experience and the, the knowledge of the neighborhoods, you know, and the writings that he put together. And I'm gonna leave it at that because I think we're gonna have a lot of questions. Um, this is another work, uh, body of work. I, I guess I'll go to, through this really quickly, a body of work that I, I've been working on called Migrant Workers. And it was published, uh, this is a publication that Bruce Davison does. And uh, along with uh, uh, my writings and an interview, the, the images were paired with Dorothea Lang's images. So the work continues into other facets of, of documentary work and people who influence me, um, you know, an homage to John White, who's my teacher, who's in the show. Um, I, I, an homage to John White is always there for me because um, I'm always thinking about him when, it, when I'm taking images and the, the conversations we had in his class and, and the conversations he, he spoke about uh, when he spoke about Gordon Parks and Jesse Jackson and Mandela and all these historical moments. So I always wanted to capture that part of, um, of history, just, just, be, just having that opportunity to be a part of his life and, and being influenced by him. So um, I'm really honored to be, actually be in the exhibition with John White. Um, besides my other beautiful brothers and sisters, um, I'm really honored to be in an exhibition with, with uh, my, a, a pops, a mentor, a teacher, and a friend. So I'll leave it at that. And I think we, we'll send it back to Linda. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Carlos. Um, yeah, I don't know if I inter introduced myself. I think I just jumped right into it. My name is Linda Dorman, and I'm the curator of the exhibition. And um, I want to take our first question to uh, John, John White. Um, and and uh, here we go. Um, I would consider all of the photographers in this exhibition to be humanists. And what draws you to photograph the, the subjects that you photograph, John? Uh Thank you for the question. First, I, let, me, let me say that uh, thank you. Thank you for being the uh, uh, the glue, the, the the lamp lighter for all of this. You've always been that type of person who who uh, uh, looking out for humanity, and I appreciate that. Um, what what was okay? The question is what what uh, what draws you to photograph the subjects that you photograph? Love. I love the love. I love creation, I love the creator, I love uh, 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 human nature, uh, I love environmental nature. And I think what we've seen tonight in these images is that it, it's the same thing. It, it's, it's a oneness that unites us, you know, and it's, it's not the camera, you know, it's not the camera, the camera of course unites us, 
it's not the uh, the curiosity. It's the 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 thing as Carlos just said. This thing called time. This thing called time. This thing called time. And photography is this language, a visual language that, uh, if my latest count, there I think there's over seven billion, less than eight billion people on the planet right this moment. But it's a it's a language that a visual language that everybody understands. And so we are there to do, and if we don't, who's will? who will? And we're doing it for today, we're doing it for uh, those now, but we're doing it for generations that are not yet. And so it's this responsibility to uh, use the gifts of, uh, or, for, or bend the eyes for others. Uh, that's what keeps me in flight. I mean, you look at, you look at the, the story on the, the veterans, for instance, and the diversity of things. And, 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 uh, and it's, it's what brought some sadness to my heart when I was looking at that because I was a Marine. And I, I know some of the things that happen, you know, as a Marine, we serve the country through this nature. But if, if that story is not told, who's gonna, who's gonna know it? So photographers are, 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 are photography and photographers and visual servants, visual messenger are those who keep the wonder of the visual wonder opens in the heart of humanity forever. And I wanna be like the students. I wanna be like the people on the show you're, you're in your exhibit. <laughs> Well, you you've influenced everyone in in the in the exhibition. So we we, we really love you and we appreciate appreciate that. Um, let's see. I've got questions everywhere on my desk here. Um, Stephen, um, you cover a broad cross section of society in your work, including groups like the Proud Boys and the KKK. What leads you to include them in your work? Well, my work has changed over different points in time. So if I just really quickly kind of went through it, I did a book called Urban Notions, which was photographed in the Illinois Triangle I grew up in, which was Chicago, Champaign-Urbana, and Springfield. The next book I did was called uh, The Black Transatlantic Experience in Street Life and Culture in Ghana, Jamaica, England, the U.S. And I'm just sort of giving that as an overview because I was really looking at the Black communities there. What I wanted to do on this book, or with the new, you know, with the work now, is to really look at America overall. So we've also had some seminal projects like Walker Evans' American Photographs, Robert, you know, Frank's the um, the Americans. Um, and so as a, you know, but it's a very different point in time, and how the country sees me and how I see the country is very different than them. So I really wanted to do something that was a an overview of the entire country, a survey, so that in order to really kind of do that fairly, I had to really look at everybody. But as I said before, I'm, the, one of the most important things to me are the experiences. The, what I feel very fortunate in, is being a photographer, I actually have a byproduct that I can share. So it's also a matter of me having to go out to make the photographs, to interact with people, to learn about that, but then also to kind of see what happens visually. But it is to try, but my work is really trying to um, create a, a, um, an inclusive overview and survey of America. Thanks, thank you. Um, this is sort of a question for everyone, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pose it to Mariah first. What what are your biggest challenges in in photographing your work and in, in, in this case the uh, the American Legion project? Um, there were a lot of challenges in doing this project, and you know, as Stephen was just saying, as a photographer, we're all the like a witness to the subject, but we're also like very physically there and participating and, you know, caught in the emotions of the people that you're interacting with and uh, all the things going on around you. And I think it was really, American Legion specifically was really challenging for me because I am a, a queer Jewish woman coming in from the city and going to like these really small towns and just being this kind of like blank slate, but also surrounded in an environment that I have, you know, like, I don't, I don't know people that just like carry a pistol all the time or, you know, and, or a lot of people that served in the military at all. So it was challenging to just kind of be in this very bizarre, place in that it's not bizarre to them, but it's bizarre to me as like a city person. Um, and then also being a, a single woman traveling alone and being in a almost always predominantly male space. Um, 
and then doing it at a time where it was culminating right at the 2016 election. So there was a lot of, there, I had a lot of challenges, both like emotionally and then technically putting together a project of that kind of scale. And uh, I was very fortunate that I worked with so many people that kind of helped me put it all together because, you know, you. I, I work in primarily digital and it's like, you can take a million photos and take notebooks. I saw Carlos's notebooks. Like I have the same just binders of all these different locations and all these notes. And then having people that supported me and supported this work by editing it and putting it all together into this really digestible thing. Um, it's, it's anybody that's thinking about doing like a big project, it's, it, there's a lot of challenges. It's a, very emotional on m multiple levels. So it's, that was the most, that, it, there was a lot of challenges. I guess that's the short answer. How did you, how did you, this is Carlos, how did you overcome the challenges? You know, you got to eat the elephant one bite at a time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, I like that, yeah. I, <laughs> it was something, you know, I don't know if, if you both had a similar experience, but it's like, you just, you're doing this thing and you're doing it kind of almost compulsively over this long period of time and just like collecting and collecting and collecting, but then also kind of cultivating all these relationships and strings where at, at some point it's almost like you have, like I felt like I had, I just had to finish it because so many people had also entrusted me with their story and their time. And that's something that it, it just was like, <clears throat> you know, at a certain point, you just have to just keep pushing forward. But it was, I kind of took it at like, I was like, oh, this is instead of going to grad school or something, it's just, mm -hmm. because it's all, it's also all self-directed. And I know that that's what your, you know, everybody's projects that are in this show, they were all self-directed. Like we all decided to go and do this. Nobody told us to do this. It was something that we wanted to see and that we all made into reality in very, in different ways, but all in a culminating way that, you know, Linda was kind enough to put together for people to see all, all at the same time. Linda Matt, yeah, this yeah, is Stephen something. Mark. Uh, it's Stephen Mark, just real quickly. I love the way you describe that in terms of, you know, having to eat the elephant one bite at a time. And I was sort of laughing because um, it's also a matter of um, sometimes um, how many bites does it take before you actually know that you're actually eating elephant? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew it was an elephant pretty quickly, I will say. <laughs> John, you were going to ask some, something? It, yes, let me just add, let me just say one thing that, uh, uh, quickly. Um, I think, okay, in life, in life, uh, there, there are two types. There are two types of people. There's thunder and lightning. Uh, uh, thunder makes a lot of noise, doesn't do anything. Lightning, bang. I remember being in, in Africa once. One of my trips to Africa, Reverend Jesse Jackson. I'm standing in the window. And I'm looking out over the thing, the see the great cities and things of this nature. And I said, Reverend, I want to do this someday, and I want to do that, and I want to do, and I'm going to, you know. And you know what he said to me? He said, uh, "Life is not a dress rehearsal. You only get one shot at it. Then do it." And and we're here, we're here, and and and, and all these, uh, and life's not also built on good intentions. We have to have good intention, good desires, but it comes to a point where we have to be doers. We have to be doers. We have to be doers. And and I think one of the lessons, one of the prescriptions that we get from this is that all of your presenters have been, you know, look at the work. They've been doers. You know, they've been doers. And I think it, it, whatever whatever our desires, our hopes are, it's important. It's important, and it's important to somebody else. And if we don't tell the story, if it's, it's not going to be told. It'll be lost. And so I would hope that people will look at the different, the variety of stories and what we've seen, and see that one thing that unites, or, or one thing that is, we're doing, we're doing. We can't publish an excuse. You have to be doing. And then also, uh, you know, uh, my my thing like keeping flight is in, in your flight. You have to know when to uh, go on autopilot, rest your wings. You know, when to take a break. 
but keep yeah. focused, stay focused. I, and I think to me, I'm, I'm getting inspired from the standpoint that uh, rekindling my 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 push to do, get a lot of things accomplished. But we have to do it. We have to do it because if we don't, that's part of our being. And then recognize this this thing called this precious gift called time. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, John. Um, okay, guys, um, John or Carlos, you know, what are, what are some of the big challenges? You guys do really intense uh, subject matter and what are some of the big challenges for you and your projects? Uh, um, for me, I think the real challenge is like, when you're looking at this place and you know the all these you know you're friends with people and you're living there and you're trying to figure out your own life and you're and then all this stuff is happening that you're going out and photographing each day and then it's like how do you step back and understand it beyond your beyond what you're actually seeing in this myopic way sometimes like how do you get distance from the the subject itself and then how do you re know that you're representing it in a way that you or representing all the parts that you want to get to so I think that was challenging you know sometimes you could go deep into like for me like I, I spent a lot of time to me what was really fascinating like and what is fascinating about Chicago in the last 25 years is like you really saw like yeah the end of this post-industrial and you would have this just history just all around you crumbling all around you and then really the the communities that were just left behind and you know we're just in there photographing and hanging out with people and in the schools that just like the Paul Revere school where I taught like there's no good reason why that school didn't have enough electricity to power computers in 1998 it didn't there was no reason other than racism institutional inequality you know like the neglect of politicians and like the way that our society is built and so if you took a look and you went out onto the street which we did and we do all the time as photographers and people who care and you open your eyes to what's happening you can't help but see injustice and resilience side by side and it's like those two things go hand in hand and there's injustice there's people fighting and there's resilient people who are going to say no and aren't going to accept the circumstances that are put upon them and so that's what i see in i mean john white and steve and carlos and mariah and all the people, you know, this is like a homecoming for for us because we all would see each other on the streets or Steve and John taught Carlos and I. And it's just like these things are fundamental. And so if you open your eyes and ask the question, is this right? I think that's and your answer is no, and you have a camera, then you sort of go out and make those pictures. But in that it's a big challenge, right? Yeah. I guess um, I'll take the next question, but I, I wanna say that um, for me, a lot of the biggest challenges are not having, um, not really having, I mean, it, like how do I put this together? When you get into this practice, you find yourself being a minority, right? Quote, unquote. Um, and, and for me, what was actually really helpful that helped me overcome this challenge was seeing, you know, a, a person like Stephen Marks, being around John Lowenstein, um, having these amazing, you know, women who were teachers um, at community college, like uh, Meg Gherkin, who's, who's uh, married to uh, uh, Gordon Quinn. She was, she, and she taught at community college. She's my first photo teacher. 
and she taught for a long time um um you know and she was she she really taught us how to print and she she was just a, a a master printer and and then you know having a face like john white seeing a a a black brother like me uh you know different shade but seeing like a father figure up there teaching a class with uh you know didn't didn't really give you a pass but you know just seeing him seeing spike lee making him uh films like that really helped me overcome because we always we always kind of think about the negative right not the negative but like we always think about like the challenge right but what helps you overcome those challenges is really seeing somebody be successful at it um seeing Dawu bay like blow up in the past eight years you know eight years ago you would say Dawu bay to anybody nobody really knew his name outside of the circle right of, of photography seeing just like come up so i i like i like that part of it um and yeah do you want should we move on to another question yep. can i throw yep. something in also this is Stephen mark yep um i think it's also a matter of um a couple of things um may sound a little flippant but it's a matter of i think also entertaining as well as trusting yourself and so what i mean by trusting yourself and that is um following through because it can be one thing in this field I find is that you have to deal with a lot of rejection, but you have to kind of push past that in terms of creating the work and not getting discouraged with that. The other thing is people talk about getting um, burned out. And uh, what I always like to say is that if you get burned out, you're going too much on what you've been taught, what you already know and what you've already done. So that's what I mean by also kind of keeping yourself entertained. So you're kind of constantly moving forward. The medium is in terms of photography, you know, I love it when people say, you know, photography is easy to do. And I always like to say, yeah, it is easy to do, but it's hard to do well. And then to start to figure out how to pull together the bits and pieces that you're experiencing and that you're allowed to witness and then start to give it a form where somebody else has the chance to engage with that work in the same way it means something to you is a challenge, but that's also the reward. Yeah. Um, that, that this leads me to something about like your intents, you know, for Carlos and John, both of you, your photographs are very, for a lack of a better word, very artistic. They're, they're exper you use experimental techniques and, and also, you know, you do filmmaking and whatnot. What, um, you know, why do you do it, do things that way? I, I think I would say the expression doesn't come in, in one format for me. Um, and I think that's part of, part of my dyslexia. Um, the, the, the expression comes in different formats. So it can come in film. Um, you know, when I have to write a poem, I can write a poem. Um, I don't force myself enough to write, but I can write. Um, and then obviously photography is, is the practice that I've been doing for the longest, but it, it comes, you know, like film really opened up my soul. It really helped me to talk to people in a different way and, and express my thinking and my feelings and really like the, the point of view of the world for me. Um, and that, and that came from, and I always like to talk about the influence, but that came from like just hearing John White talk about, I was in the room with Gordon, you know, and, and I was like, who's Gordon? And, you know, I asked him, who's Gordon? And he said, Gordon Parks, you know? And I'm like, who's Gordon Parks, you know? I was like 19 years old and I heard of the name, but didn't really know him. And then, and then I found out who Gordon Parks was and he was this writer and this filmmaker and a poet and he, played music and I'm still trying to learn. I'm going to learn the piano. I'm going to be like as good as Gordon on the piano someday. I have time. If I make it to be 80, I'll be, I'll be good. Um, but, but just, you know, these things help formulate the expression, you know, and I think being friends with John, uh, Lowenstein is a part of that is having that discussion of what's next and how to approach life and you know family and the people around you you know yeah definitely that 
connection and practice and then just experience and rubbing shoulders with all these with Carlos and especially when we're in the community together you at us at scenes and coming back home or I remember one photo one time photo Carlos came back he had photographed this family who was trying to raise money for uh, a young uh, person in the back of the yard who'd been shot and killed and the picture's in the book but it's like a really powerful picture of this woman sitting there and he came back and we were talking about that night and we were just talking about you know that as they passed you know they didn't have money to bury the, their their young person you know their, their son and their cousin their nephew they were having to pass around the the um you know just get donations from the community and it is like it's an emotional connection that we have to you do something when you feel it, like you feel it inside you. That's where your best work comes from. And with the with the technique, I always looked at like what technique actually connects with me and with the people. So with in the in the south side, as I went out in the community, what opens a conversation on the street? And in the early two thousands, you know, as opposed to today the Polaroid really opened that conversation because there was a long history of people walking, you know, selling Polaroids, family members, this very kind of warm feeling that everybody had for the Polaroid at that time because that was the instant. That's what a lot of people had the experience with. It wasn't like today. When you went on the block in 2002, 1995, 98, cameras weren't ubiquitous in fact cameras were something that were generally for wealthier communities not to say there weren't there was a long history of photography in the black community but um it was very different today social media everybody is telling their stories in the community and broadcasting that's what we saw with you know uh ferguson and you know all the uprisings over the last decade so those tools were not in the hands and so that was really, you know, though, so I chose that because it could open a conversation. Thanks, Jen. Um, we are almost at eight o'clock and we are going to um, answer a few questions from the audience. I, we could go on for a long time and we're just, it feels like we're just getting warmed up, but um, <laughs> let me take a quick look here. Um, okay, so the, the question that's there is is for me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the question is, how do you see the different views of these photographers come together as a statement? Why these photographers? We want to hear the process of gathering this great group of image makers. Um, yeah. Well, during during the pandemic, um, you know, just like everybody, I was spending a lot of time on my computer and I sort of rekindled my love of photography. Um, I studied with Stephen Mark and I also studied with John White. And I've worked with um, John Lowenstein and Carlos and Stephen and John on uh, City 2000. Uh, I was the curator of, of the, uh, one of the curators for that project. And my husband is, is a painter and he paints a lot of uh, work about society, the ills of society and whatnot. So that's always at the, like the forefront of my mind of what's going on in the world and things were so nuts and whatnot. And I sort of took to looking at the computer and I started looking these guys up. What's, what's, what's John Lowenstein doing, you know? And I, I was <laughs> following him on Instagram and Carlos and, and Mariah and, I, I I guess the show was percolating, you know, I, I thought, wow, these photographers are doing really important things. And, um, and then I was wondering what's Stephen Mark doing? Cause he doesn't have a, he's not online. So there wasn't a real easy way to um, find him. And he had just published his book, you know, uh, American True Colors. And I ordered the book and was looking at it. And then everything's just sort of came together in my mind, you know, um, all of these people doing really important work. 
and including uh, Jess Dugan, who is not here this evening. Um, their work is uh, that we're showing in the show uh, to survive on this shore is about aging um, or older uh, trans people. And it comes with these amazing interviews and portraits and it's just like phenomenal. So it just felt like everybody was touching on different parts of what's happening in the country. And um, it just, everyone's work just felt so relevant and important at that time. And um, that, that's sort of what like brought everything together. And then, you know, part of me felt like, wow, this, a lot of this work is sad and whatnot. And this show needs, needs a little more hope, just a little more something. And um, and then I had to bother John White to uh, get him to get involved. And he was so gracious and so generous and came up with these gorgeous prints for the show. And so that's that's sort of how it happened. And we were just like watching things happening in the world and in our audience in Northwest Indiana, you know, we live in a conservative state. I just it just felt important to show this type of work um to our to our audience at South Shore Arts. Yeah. Does any does anybody else have any questions? I don't see any more in here. Do any do any of uh our panelists have any questions for any of the other panelists? Okay, I have my final question here then. Um, what's next for you? And you can each take a turn. Tell us what you got, got in the hopper or what you're planning on doing next. Well, next for me is to uh, finish my uh, class tomorrow night, PJ, photojournalism class, uh, and, and launch them back into orbit. Uh, it marks uh, 44 years consecutive sharing there. And then uh, work on more book projects and uh, archives. And so that's my goal to survive till tomorrow night and then I can keep in flight. That's right. Let us know if you need any help with that, John. Thank you. John Lowenstein. Um, well, the South Side, finishing the South Side book, first and foremost, which is coming out. Uh, 2023, which is great, with Hacha Kant, uh, the publisher. And then um, I've been working on a long kind of another project about another project about migration um, and families, uh, particularly one family in back of the yards. Uh, that's coming on National Geographic in next year too, and also one about uh, call about my family and uh, my own experience of kind of my, my own migration and our family's sort of uh, diaspora that unintentionally and intentionally just continues in many ways. So that's kind of what I'm working on. Cool. Carlos? So I am working on um, getting funding for, for Try to trying to get funding for a documentary um, and trying to get funding for a narrative uh, feature film. So working on applications, a lot of my days are working on applications to to and, and bugging people while I'm doing portrait assignments um, and I don't know fixing my house, taking care of my boy. So those are the things I'm doing. I, I'm working on a, on a project for National Geographic on um, environmental racism and the effects of that on, on black and brown communities. That, that's been a, a you know, challenge with the pandemic and the passing of my mother and all the other things that life really kind of puts in front of you while you're trying to be a human, right? Um, and so I'm figuring those things out, and, and you know all the all the all the words you hear from your friends and loved ones really start to come together, and you just kind of figure these things out while you're in the process, right, of of working. So 
that's that's where I'm where I'm at where I've been. Um, and I, I find it that you have to be honest, like John is with people. You have to be honest where you are because we can't always hold the weight of the world. So that's where I'm at. But um, I also want to give a shout out to my friends, the big new Vestek, who's on on in here. And Linda was telling me about this film. Um, that I'm gonna watch tonight is called uh, "God Speeds Los Polacos," and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put it here. And it's about it's a big news life. Um, it's a big news always kind of told me about his life uh, in little pieces. And he's such a he's an he's another important uh, friend in my life. And and it's amazing that there's a there's a really important film about him. So I, I put the link here um, on. on I, I, I am DB. Um, so you all should watch it, rent it. And, and really, it's a big new work for the Tribune for, I believe, maybe 20 years. And before that, he was, he worked at Geographic and blah, blah, blah. Um, but he's an amazing photographer and he's, he's very advanced. Uh, he was shooting medium format with a strobe, which is all like, what the little the young hipsters are doing now with film so big new was doing that in in 2000 um so i i can't wait to see this film i'm giving a shout out to my friends the big new uh write this film people watch this film and 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 reach out to the big new i'm volunteering you people are gonna reach out to you Sabignu. thanks for being here there's a there's a the big new print in our in my office here right yeah. behind me yeah that print that <laughs> print that's beautiful. We love that. I mean, one. how advanced was that? Like he was this man was shooting with a Mamiya uh seven, I believe, and a and a strobe. And just like lighting, like just lighting things really beautiful in 2000. And 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 you know, now people are doing that. Now people are trying to like emulate these styles of, of photography to come back so it, it's interesting being part of the history and seeing it and i think you know at 47 i'm still growing and learning and going back to all the things you 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 were hearing 20 years ago and and, and it just re, it kind of repeats itself so it's really good to see all these beautiful faces um yvette al i haven't seen you in a while um annie Thank you for all be, for being here and supporting us. Yeah, thanks everyone. This is really, how about really cool Mariah? to see everybody. Yeah, well, how about Mariah? What's next for you? Sorry. Um, I'm having a midlife existential crisis <laughs> and trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm, I've been working on a lot of things. I really enjoy working with older elderly people I've actually um, been working photographing elderly people since I was in high school and I worked at a retirement community and um, so I'm working on taking senior portraits but of like senior citizens so in line with uh, my work but as a commission and for projects I'm doing a project with my friend that owns a ghost town in rural Alabama so uh, I've been going down to Felltown, Alabama and uh, working on some projects there and also going and getting to know my maternal grandmother um, who my mom found out she was adopted when she was 50. So uh, I haven't known her my whole life and I've been going down to Daytona Beach and um, making portraits with her. So, you know, I as much time as I've worked with other people's grandparents, now I'm working with my own grandmother and it's a way that we're kind of getting to know each other. Um, and it's been a very interesting experience and I don't know what it's gonna be, but um, that's, that's how I'm spending my time. That sounds great. Stephen, how about you? All right. Well, a couple of things. One is I'm trying to do a better job of staying in touch with everybody because I do have a tendency to drop off the map when it's time to work. So I'm saying it. Let's see how that pans out. But also I'm finishing up um, 
Three Cat Tales and Tangled Times, the book. And one thing that's really kind of wonderful about that is um, being able to kind of think about what's next after that. So I've been making a group of other photographs that um, didn't fit into that project, um, have a little bit of a different turn. And so the fun part's going to be trying to figure out a way to actually um, pull them together, make sense, and uh, create the next work. Cool. Oh, uh, John Lowenstein, you said you wanted to do a shout out. I just remembered that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I just got some tough news, but, you know, photography, I think one of the, the probably for me, the best thing of photography is just the relationships you make with the friends, but also the people you photograph. And this week, um, you know, the one of the most amazing people I met in Chicago photographing and working was this um, guy named activist. Uh, El Salvador and guy named Jose Landa Verde and he passed away and I the last thing I saw last week was that he um, was on Facebook saying like he wasn't long for this world so I texted him and tried to get in touch with him I thought he was going to pull through but he didn't and so just a real you know we the the Lupe Guzman the woman who is the the matriarch of this um, Mexican family who had been photographed for 20 years called me to let me know that he had passed away and we, I think we were all really sort of um, touched and sad but also just wanted to honor his memory and you know the photographs and the times of struggle that we did work together and fun because he was as real as they came so just a shout out to wherever he is, to Jose Landa Verde. Yeah, I would have shown the pictures, but yeah, just Thank, thinking of them. John. Yeah. Yeah, well, can I say something real quickly too, though? And that is that um can't take any time for granted. And Linda, thank you for pulling the show together because it was not only a matter of, um, not only a matter of um, the exhibition pulling the work together, but it also is another thing in terms of reestablishing sense of unity and connected you know, in connection with all of us as well, too. Yeah. And greatly appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. That that was something I, I wanted to close with is that the photography community is so special. All Everybody here that's a part of that community, the, the friendships, you know, you could not see someone for 10 years and then you see them and it's like you just saw them yesterday. And the way everybody supports one another and shows up to a thing like this and whatever, it's it's so refreshing. It's so wonderful. And I think everybody should try to like nurture these relationships as much as we can because we need each other and it's fun. And, you know, this show has just been such a pleasure just working with everybody and bringing us all together. And hopefully we'll be doing something again uh, in the future. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Hey, Linda and all, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Dave. <laughs> no problem. Dave, oh, Dave's the executive director of South Shore Out Arts, our host uh, site for the exhibition. Well, I apologize for jumping in late, but I wanted to make sure I caught it. And uh, Carlos, if you watch... Uh, uh, it's a big news movie. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. A great film when we screened it uh, at the center. Great. I'm going to watch it tonight. So let's all watch it, you know, for for, for our brothers. Yeah. yeah. I put the link. I put the link in here. So God speeds los polacos. Um, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, Carlos. For nice, kind words. Thank you. Yes. Beautiful. Uh Love you guys. You Where's John White? He's listening. <laughs> you you get the final word, honey. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Okay, then I would leave with three F words: <laughs> faith, focus, and flight. Be faithful to what you're doing, to your purpose in life, to your assignment from life. Stay focused on. As Cardinal Bernadine said, prioritize the priorities. You have an assignment from life itself. That's what you're doing. The most important thing is keeping flight. Uh, love you.
Love you much. Bye, you guys. Have a you good know. night. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, you guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, John. Right. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. Good night. Thanks Everybody. again. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, people on thank you, people on Instagram for sticking around and hanging out with us. <laughs> Was anybody there? Yeah, people were on Instagram a lot. Wow. So thank, yeah. Fabulous. Take care. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Wonderful job, Linda. Thank you.